2020, Mentor Channel. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As a short introduction, please let me show you a picture that may evoke some memories to some of you. Some of you may recognize the cockpit of this aircraft. It is one of the very first versions of the Boeing 737. In this aircraft, there was, were very few automatic functions. No autothrust, a small FMS, no AP, except to maintain the track and the altitude. At that time, the pilot had no other choice than to be fully engaged in the flight. Now, we have very different cockpits. We have Panalogic, dark cockpit concept. We have some sightseek and fly-by-wire aircraft. We have ACAM management, sometimes vertical display. We also have robust autopilot and auto thrust. We have protections for flight envelope. We have an FMS and very important capabilities in terms of our nav approaches, FLS, RNP, etc. Of course, all these automations make the flight very different. Over the past few years, the aeronautical industry and authorities have become aware that because of this high level of automation, some of the pilots have lost part of their manual flying skills, in particular in abnormal or degraded situations. That is why the first part of this presentation will be dedicated to manual flight. Then we'll have a look at upset prevention and recovery. Let's start with manual flight. Why is flying safe? Well, flying is safe due to the combination of four prerequisites. First, the aircraft has to be designed according to certification requirements. Then, the aircraft has to be maintained according to approved procedures such as MMEL. The aircraft has also to be operated by skilled pilots. And eventually, the aircraft has to be flown within a safe ATM en route and airfield environment. These four prerequisites are interestingly linked together. As an example, when we do the certification exercise, we write some safety analysis document. In this system safety analysis, we take as an assumption that the pilot is able to take over very quickly in the, the event of a malfunction. For example, the pilot has to be able to take over within three seconds in cruise, only one second during approach and immediately during landing. Over the past years, several major accidents were due to a loss of control in flight. So, how can we avoid such accidents? First, we can improve the aircraft design. We can enhance the flight envelope protections. We can also work on the alerting system or on the automation. Then, regarding flight crews, we can improve the training improve the representativeness of simulators. For example, we now have some new models with a very good representativity of aircraft handling at high altitude. We can also improve the way techniques are trained, such as upset prevention and recovery, or stall. Eventually, we can improve crew resource management. In the sad events I talked about, the investigators identified that the PM understood the situation, warned the PF, but did not dare to take over. The two last points are directly linked to flight crew proficiency. So, what should be avoided? We will have a look at a small video now. The video I'm going to show you was made from a real event. You will see that the aircraft enters into a turbulence. 
we will have a look at the video two times. You will see that there are two different aircrafts representing two different things. Let's first have a look at the video. You can focus here on the top right, which is the position of the joystick. Here the aircraft is in the turbulence. The blue aircraft corresponds to what happened during the event. OK, now we will see the video once again. The blue aircraft corresponds to what happened during the event. You will see that it, this is due to very large inputs on the, of the side stick. The pink aircraft is what would have happened with very few actions and very smooth actions on the side stick. Let's have a look again at the video. Beginning of the turbulence. Here, blue aircraft side stick. What happened during the event? From left to right, up, down. And here, with only a small input, stable aircraft. So, what is a high level of proficiency for the crews? Well, it relies first on theoret theoretical knowledge, then on skills. So, how to maintain a high level of proficiency? First, you have to evaluate the level of each pilot in terms of knowledge and in terms of skills. Depending on this evaluation, you have to train your crews in order to enhance their knowledge and also to train them in simulator to enhance their skills. Then they can use both their knowledge and their skills in their day-to-day -day life when they fly. It is also very important to analyze the feedbacks from the flight, in particular the feedbacks from the manual flight in order to do a continuous improvement process and in order to uh, enhance and to modify the content of the training depending on what happens. First, you can train to enhance the knowledge of your crews. There are many subjects that can be trained depending on the needs and depending on the evaluation. For example, performance. Do you crews know that at high altitude there is only 20 or 30% of thrust available because of the low level of oxygen? Do they know what is the tropopause and what are his effects? You can also train on aerodynamics, on the definition of aircraft upset or undesired aircraft state, on the causes of aircraft upset, on environmental effects, on the failure of flight instruments, or airplane upset caused by the pilot, etc., etc. Very different topics. Then, crews have to be trained in simulator. Perform manual flight. Goes from sleepy use AP off to full off AP FD, auto threat, FPV. Fly in the entire flight envelope. From the middle, work toward the edges. Vary the conditions, day and night, adverse weather or conditions. Use realistic and representative tools. Use our scenarios. You can contact us if you need. Use simulator models. We have the chance now to have very representative models. Don't hesitate to create very tricky scenarios with night, rain conditions, a little bit different in the flight envelope. Training in simulator enhances the skills, so it is very important to focus on the skills of the pilot. As an example, manual flying skills, threat and error management, decision making, crew communication, etc. Then, fly. The fly crews will use what they have learned during their trainings in flight. Establish policy for the level of automation, 
for example, the use of AP, Autothrust, FDs, BIRD. Of course, these policies will depend on the weather conditions, on the fatigue, on the type of operation. But it is very important to try to put in place a use of manual flight, for example. Do you know how much time does a long-haul pilot spend performing manual flight? Well, it is about 6 to 7 minutes out of 100 hours of flight. It is very few. Then, we recommend to analyze the flight data, in particular for manual flight operations. You can use this analysis as a feedback for training and flight policies. Let's have a look at, at a new video now. And this is exactly what we call a good proficiency of the flight crew. You will see that the aircraft encounters a malfunction, a system malfunction. Sudden pitch down because of the malfunction. Very small and smooth inputs of the side stick to recover gently and smoothly. This is exactly that what we want to achieve on a real event example. Let's move now to the second part of his presentation, which is upset prevention and recovery. As you may know, there was already an airplane upset recovery training ed revision 2. So, why did the ICAO decide to launch a revision 3? Well, everybody liked the revision 2, but nobody knew exactly what was in it, in particular because of its format. It was a very textual document. As a consequence, the ICAO requested the low cost group loss of control avoidance and recovery training group to provide regulators with a guidance. ICAO also wanted to include all transport aircraft. The result is the revision 3 of this training ed. What is new? First, there is a format change. It includes turboprop transport aircraft. It is in electronic format. There are three levels of content that can be selected. Improved graphics, embedded videos, and elements of startle. Regarding the content, you may have noticed that now in the title, title there is a P that was added. It is not ORTA, it is ORTA. The P means prevention. The new revision 3 focus on prevention. There is also an enhanced definition of undesired aircraft states, which is an intentional divergences from parameters normally experienced during operations. This means that an aircraft upset may involve pitch and or bank angle divergences, which was already the case before, but also inappropriate airspeed for the conditions. In the revision 3, the recovery techniques were more developed. There is also now in revision 3 of the training head some training recommendations. These are high-level recommended training sequences. Then, approved training organizations have to define their own training programs depending on these recommendations. What is new is that there are rationals for all these recommendations and that once again it put a clear emphasis on awareness and avoidance, which is the P of the prevention. In this new revision there is also encouragement to train in the entire envelope. So, you can have a look at this new uh, document. It is available on uh, internet. It is also available as an application on iPad and on Windows tablets. Following the issuance of OPTA Revision 3, 
we in Airbus have issued an OTT. The aim of this OTT is to give the position of Airbus as a manufacturer regarding undesired aircraft states and training recommendations. So, how should be the training about undesired aircraft state? No, it should not be like this. If we refer to the OTT, we can see that uh, undesired aircraft state training is based on instructor-led exercises. That is why it is very important to set up a train-the-trainer training for instructors before going into a simulator with trainees. There are three categories of exercises. Demonstration, which is led by an instructor from the pilot seat. Maneuver, single maneuver at a time with no specific context. And scenario, in which the, scenario, the, the training is embodied in a daily operational flight. The exercises mentioned in, mentioned in the OTTs are manual and automatic flight, normal, alternate, and then direct low, with maneuvers, energy and flight pass management, including unreliable airspeed, maneuvers, and scenarios, unusual aircraft attitude, detection and recovery, which is a demonstration and then a scenario, and stall, which is a maneuver and a scenario. We also recommend to use no motion beyond FSTD normal low flight envelope because it is no, not representative in terms of G load. As a conclusion, what can we say? Well, prevention is the key for everything. The recovery skills have to be maintained, in particular manual flying skills. Be realistic in trainings and scenarios. Use simulators at the highest fidelity. Share experiences and use provided scenarios. This is an industry problem that we must solve together. As a consequence, do not hesitate to contact us. Do not experiment, but contact us. It is an open discussion to find the right way to do it. Thank you for your attention. A320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching.